Hey, it's Gordon. Welcome to the bench. We are clearly not at the bench. Um, what I wanted to do this morning was just share with you a process. And uh, I know this is not technical. This is really kind of common sense stuff. But uh, it's one of those things. You watch a video sometimes and you think, wow, that was really simple. Why didn't I think of that? But um, what I'm doing this morning is documenting uh, totes and knobs and... Um, I'm creating templates for these knobs. These are not Stanley. The entire set, and there are many, many here, uh, entire set was donated by a gentleman that was super generous. He knows the mission. Um, these are all original as best we can tell, and they're vintage. So um, in absence of trying to trace something that doesn't exist, he sent them all to me, which is a huge risk. Uh, and I really, really appreciate it. So here we are. We're going to document these totes and knobs for patterns and templates. And um, so I wanted to share with you that process. So how do you, and really, let's get to the point on this knob. How do you trace this thing? And how do I document something that's so hard to hold on to? Um, and it doesn't lay on my page well, and it doesn't stay where I want it. Uh, so I'll share with you some really simple tips. So here we go. We're going to set this guy out of the way. And the first thing I do is I lay out a center line and a baseline. And then we're just going to get one dimension. And I'm just using dial calipers, right? You don't need anything fancy. You can even use the plastic cheapos from, you know, general. If you go to Lowe's or Depot or somewhere, you can get these things. And there's my overall height. So I'm just going to mark that. And now I have an overall height. And why we take the time in the the... The measurements and mark this thing off is that if you look at this you see I call it like hot air balloon you see a shape that's very distinctive and I recognize this as not being a Stanley knob and that's part of the challenge when you recreate or you're trying to reproduce something is that um, there's a recognizable silhouette and if you don't hit it it just jumps out as a knockoff or a you know, poor attempt or, or a user made and we all love user made craftsman made stuff. So I'm not dissing on that. I'm just saying if we're trying to make something authentic and we're trying to stick to the original dimension and appearance, then this is how it would be done. So we've got the overall height. We marked that. I pay attention to dimensions and I will put some numbers on here. Um, but for the sake of time and to show you how simple this process is, we're just going to rip through it. So there's our first step. And again, I'm using just a simple measurement, transferred it, there's my height. Now my next important dimension would be the, the largest diameter, where is that? And I'm gonna eyeball it, I'm gonna put my calipers right about at that tangent point, and I'm gonna call it there. Okay, so I'm not really paying attention to numbers per se, but I'm just gonna transfer that large diameter. And then the same for this, the small diameter here. We want to know where that is. So I'm going to put my point right in there. So it's a little easier. Bump. We're going to transfer that point. And there's my small diameter. Now for the sake of illustration, I'll draw a line here. So you can see this is my small diameter. This would be my large diameter. And if you zoom in, you'll see I do have graph paper. These are fine little points. Um, might not be easy to pick up depending on your resolution, but so we've got our dimensional height. If you wanted to capture this foot, you could do that as well. This one's a little fat. We're going to call that the foot dimension here. Cool. Now we need some diameters. So I'm going to go right back up to the top and I'm going to get my largest diameter. You can do it this way in a profile or you can turn it this way, kind of capture it like that. One of the things that I find interesting, and you should expect this as a woodworker, is that these are never round, right? So there's gonna be a dimension here that's really tight. And if I just turn it, it's loose, right? So this is obular shape, and that's just the grain of the wood. It's nature, because we're working with organic materials. So don't stress over trying to nail this thing down like a machinist or you know, these aren't aerospace parts, they're hand planes. So we'll just find a dimension there. And this is where your shop teacher math comes in if you want to do it this way. And again, here's what I do. My measurement is going to be 1 inch, 600 thousandths, 85. We'll call it 86 for the sake of math. 
I'll just go up a thousand. Boom. One, six, eight, six. So half of 686 is 343. So I need to be half inch plus 343, which is 843. There's half of my major diameter, large diameter. I'm just going to put that down here. That was no trickery, no cell phone, no calculator. That's just straight up. Thank you, Mr. Morin, my shop teacher was an icon in the day. Mr. Morin. Okay. Now we need this small diameter. So I'm just going to put my calipers on here. Again, you can give this a little twist. Try and find that small diameter. And then this one, it's going to be 826. What's half of 826? 4, 10, and 3. So 413. Bam. 413. We're going to measure that. Mark both sides. And there's our layout. So that's pretty much my knob. Now here's the artistic part. You have to capture these graceful lines. And if you're familiar with French curves, that's a, it's like a template, like a circle template, but it's irregular curves. So they're French lines. And I don't necessarily do that. I'm just gonna sketch it um, because I'm holding the part in my hand. And I like to use just my eye to give me that likeness. But we also need, oops, we need one more dimension. That's our basic foot. And right there, you can see how out of round this guy is. Well, look at that. He's 1,200 exactly. So 1.200. We're just going to cut it in half. And that's going to be 600. So 0.6. is my foot diameter. And we did transfer the height. So we're just gonna box this in to give it a little bit of reference. This is kind of what the foot looks like, even though you're not gonna have these crisp corners on your part, right? There's a radius here, we know that. And now you should start to see the shape of this thing coming in. So this is where, again, I'm gonna use my eye to just sketch in this line. And you gotta remember these are tangent points, so we're going to start horizontally and then just kind of curve in, and we're connecting that point. So there's my line, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I know where I'm headed. And then we're gonna connect this guy too. And there's that kind of balloon shape. So I'm going to head down here and then tie in like that. So there's the profile. If I really wanted to cast a shadow, it's, it's, this is where it gets challenging. You can't really trace this because your pencil is going to be all over the place. So you really have to just finish your sketch. If we were to connect this thing in, tangent, and come out to here. Does it look similar? A little more sweep in here I think would be good. Kind of fill this in. You can see I started to do that there. And there it is. Okay, so I always fit my brass um, hardware by hand, so I'm not too concerned Although we'll document the depth of this. This is a deep brass barrel nut. So this is an older plane. As I understand that this is a type two in the, in the manufacturer brand that we're talking about. And then again, I'm using my calipers. I'm gonna catch that inside diameter. Not real important to me because I'm going to hand fit to the existing hardware. But it's a good reference to put that in if you want it. And 
make some hidden line stuff. And then as a reference, the through hole on this one is very small. It's like a quarter inch or less. So it's a, uh, how about that? I was about 4,000 saw. So a quarter inch bore through this guy. Again, if you wanted to put that on for reference, just to give you the visual you would know that it's a quarter inch through the hole. Dash lines through that one. And then we have a C bore on the bottom. There's a big counter bore. That's gonna give us a depth. Comes all the way up to here. And then the diameter on the counter bore. Again, that's going to be ovular. That's a funny shape. So I'm guessing that was a 550. Five, I'll call it 550 diameter. There's our shape. So it was a quick way to capture it. Um, I really don't have anything more to say than that. Um, it's easier than tracing, and I think just transferring specific dimensions to the paper, it becomes more dot to dot. Where you would screw this up, or where you might have challenge, sorry, I didn't mean to phase it or word it that way. Where you might have a challenge is if you did this. If we had our small diameter, we had our large diameter, and then we had uh, an overall height. You could see where we have a foot. And then you're just free to draw whatever. Someone could draw a shape more like this. And it would be more doorknob shape. Someone could draw a big shape like this and make it more what I call hot air balloon shape, where it's got a big sweeping taper. That OG shape right there, that's really what the challenge is. And uh, so do your best to transfer that. And if your sketch looks a little off, go ahead and erase those lines and put them back in. But I think we did pretty good with this one. And there you go. Thanks for watching.